Good morning, all. I'm Fire Chief Angelo Cavillo, uh, Chief of the Division of Fire, Cleveland, Ohio. It's a great day. Uh, it's a proud day for myself and my members and the elected officials here today. Uh, we're here to announce the ISO, ISO the Insurance Service Office uh, rating of a number one, the mark of excellence for the Cleveland Division of Fire, for the city of Cleveland, the residents and commercial owners and business owners of this great city. Um, First and foremost, I'd like to thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to give me the strength, courage, and wisdom to lead this division of men and women to protect our citizens and to provide the safety of the Cleveland Division of Fire. I want to thank my wife Maria and my family for their continuous support and dedication and love. So at this time, I, I want to uh, also thank the Honorable Mayor Frank G. Jackson for all his support. Uh, in making a lot of this happen in regards to the uh, Fire Charter Accredited uh, Academy, and also uh, to the citizens of Cleveland in regards to issue 32. Uh, that issue 32, that a half a percent increase, actually provided us an increase of 18 more fire members staffing, increased staffing, and also uh, reopened a new Engine 2 company, which were two huge components to gain points to get over that hurdle from an ISO 2 back in 2015 to an ISO 1. A huge accomplishment. So thank you, Mayor Jackson. Thank you to the citizens and thank you to City Council. Um, I want to thank the uh, Honorable Safety Director Kerry Howard for all his support, his uh, dedication, his servant leadership, and uh, just vision for this Division of Fire and the City of Cleveland and public safety. So now at this time, I'd like to introduce our City Council President, President. Kevin Kelly, a round of applause, please. Thank you, Chief. This is indeed a great day in Cleveland, Ohio. Getting this ISO rating of one, getting to the number one rating did not just happen. It happened through the hard work of the administration, the men and women of Local 93, the citizens of the city of Cleveland. And what does that mean for us? The, the, this means that we are rated by the insurance industry in terms of our ability to suppress fires, structure fires. This means that it is that there's a level of confidence that this rating gives us that makes it so that doing business in the city of Cleveland is a better bet. It makes it so that insurance rates go down. This is extremely important to how businesses selecting sites look at. This is tremendously important. And again, this did not just happen. This happened because of a lot of hard work. This happened because of the residents of the city of Cleveland, the men and women of Local 93 who brought the concerns that they had to us, that working with the administration to make sure that we, we had the new engine. We made sure that all of the, the, uh, the, the turnout gear, everything that, that is needed to get this rating was taken care of. And this again, this didn't just happen. I want to thank the chief, the mayor, the men and women of the Division of Fire. I want to thank the residents of the city of, of, city of Cleveland. This is indeed a great day for Cleveland. Thank you. And uh, I want to introduce uh, a colleague of mine next, who is the chair of our safety committee and very committed to this issue. And uh, when you're council president, you get to make a lot of decisions. And uh, I hope I've made a lot of good ones, but I think one of the better ones I've made was appointing uh, Blaine Griffin to be chair of the safety committee. So I want to uh, introduce my colleague, chairman of the Committee on Public Safety, Blaine Griffin. Thank you. Thank you, Council President. Before I uh, move forward, I do want to acknowledge and make sure I acknowledge we have several of our colleagues here today. We have uh, the Vice Chair of Public Safety, the Dean of Cleveland City Council, Mike Palencic. We have the Ward 1 Council person and also a Safety Committee uh, representative, Councilman Joe Jones. And the newest member of the council who is also working with us on the safety committee, the Ward 5 council person, Councilwoman Dolores Gray. 
Ladies and gentlemen, this is showing that Cleveland city government works when the council and administration comes together and tackles important issues like this. This is critically important to the city of Cleveland, first of all, for our safety. A couple of years ago, a lot of us on city council actually came here to this location and we actually went through a full day of a fire academy. The purpose of going through the full day of the fire academy was to make sure that we seen firsthand as Cleveland City Council what it, why it was so important to get certified as a fire academy, to spend the day with the men and women of the fire department in order to really understand their job and the safety issues that they have and why they need the turnout gear and why we need to make the investments that we made in the fire department. Now to fast forward now to have this great designation show that government works when City Hall comes together to tackle important issues like this. Our entire city is going to benefit from this issue. Our entire city will receive reduced insurance rates, the hospitals, the corporate community. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, the residents of this city will benefit from good government. So it's an exciting day for the city of Cleveland, for all of us to come together and celebrate this achievement. I'd like to personally thank Mayor Jackson, Safety Director Howard, and also Chief Cavillo, his entire command team, and we also have Commissioner Alan Markovicius here to really give them a round of applause and a thank you for pulling together this important designation for us to move this city forward. I'm so proud to be a Clevelander today. I'm proud to see government working. And ladies and gentlemen, as we're in the midst of a very interesting season, one of the things that I will tell you is that it is important to have responsible governing. Lots of people say a lot of different things, but these men and women that you see here before you between the administration, the fire department officials, Local 93, when Fran Lowley and his group, the vanguards who have members here, and everyone else, all of my colleagues on city council showing you that good government works in Cleveland when we come together and tackle important issues. So thank you so much, Chief Cavillo, to you and your team. You. And I'd like to thank all of Cleveland for supporting us and supporting good government in this city. Have a great day. So now at this time, I'd like to introduce the president of Local 93, Francis Lally. Friend. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, I want it to be clear that we're here because of one reason. We're here because of this commitment to public safety that Council President Kevin Kelly has and Safety Committee Chairman Blaine Griffin has. That's the reason we're here today. So as you may remember, several years ago, uh, at the uh, request uh, that we made to Council President Kelly, uh, Local 93 and our executive board was able to go to City Council to the Safety Committee and put forth all of the issues that we had in regard to apparatus and training and fire stations and uh, equipment issues and the Fire Training Academy and all throughout this city. And what came of that was their commitment to us that they were gonna make changes, that that uh, was no longer gonna be uh, the order of the day in the city of Cleveland for the fire department. And those same issues that uh, we were addressing then, uh, they decided to correct and put the money and the funding and the staffing and the training, uh, make it as a, a priority as a public safety. And they took that to Chief Cavillo and they said, this is what we need to do. And Chief Cavillo took that and ran with it. And it's because of their uh, commitment then to make the citizens of this city uh, safer and to make our men and women safer and to give them the equipment that they need. Uh, that was, those were the same issues that were holding back our ISO rating. So because they made the commitment to correct those issues and make the citizens of this city safer, it also allowed us then, allowed the Division of Fire to move forward and get that higher ISO rating so that we can all get cheaper rates. And I think you're gonna hear from some of the speakers after me exactly what, what went into that. And it wasn't easy but because of the commitments that were made by the uh, council president and the safety committee chair is the reason that we're here today. And I wanna thank them for that. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, now at this time, I'd like to introduce the commissioner of the water department, Commissioner Margovicius. Commissioner, please. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief, very much. Thank you for having me here this morning. You know, in an urban area like Cleveland, the water distribution system has multiple jobs it has to do. 
First and foremost, we want to deliver good, safe, high quality drinking water to all of our customers. But it also a very important, another job it has to do is to provide strong fire protection. Um, we have fire hydrants every 300 feet throughout the system. It's a mission that we take at Cleveland Water very seriously. It's something we've invested very heavily in, in our capital program over many years to make sure the distribution system is strong. Uh, we've worked very hard with Cleveland Fire over the last few years especially. We've integrated tightly with them with the new CityWorks work order system. So that as they flush hydrants, we in real time get to know where hydrants need to be worked. I would say in my 30 plus years here at Water, the condition of the fire hydrants in Cleveland has been the best it's ever been. So this is an outstanding accomplishment by Cleveland Fire. Um, my congratulations to you, Chief. The commissioner is very humble, but he's given us a big lift. We brought this division to a digital platform that nobody else has seen before, and we're so thankful for that. So thank you, Commissioner. So at this time right now, I want to get into the nuts and bolts of, bolts of how this happened and how it occurred uh, with uh, my presentation, and then I'll turn it over to one of my battalion chiefs. And I want to make sure I check off my list here. There's a lot of information. So uh, I'd like to start off with um, Director Marty Keene from Utilities. Uh, he's allowed us to work with his property, uh, his project manager in regards to the ArcGIS and the digital platform that we call Esri. Uh, now the Cleveland uh, Division of Fire sits on that platform so that we can real time uh, have dashboards for our equipment, our apparatus, our hose testing, our pre-plan inspections, and, and that's the way to actually show our stakeholders what we do and improve us, ourselves as far as our quality assurance. So I want to thank uh, I want to thank the director for that, Commissioner. Uh, I want to thank you too for your water department, your hydrants throughout the city. Uh, it's about eighteen thousand, about eighteen thousand fire hydrants in the city of Cleveland, about seven seventy-eight square miles. 78 square miles within the city of Cleveland, and that's a daunting task. But with the uh, help and our partnership of the water department and our members of the fire department, uh, annually, every year, they go out and do hydrant inspections, flow testing, and now we actually capture that on the digital platform that I call the ArcGIS Esri. So thank you for that. I want to thank Director Michael Cox, Commissioner Jeff Brown for motor vehicle maintenance for now that we have annual pump testing, annual ladder testing, and the brand new Ladder 23, and the brand new Engine Paramedic Pumper 40. So I want to thank you for that team for all their service and dedication to bring us up to where we need to be for the ISO, to continue to stay at an ISO 1 and be excellent and provide safety for our people and visitors of the city of Cleveland. I want to thank my command staff uh, who are here today. I want to thank the men and women that fight these fires every day, the backbone of the fire department. Without them, this doesn't happen. I want to exclusively thank the members that were involved in this project. Chief Greg Lightcap, Chief Thomas Schlomer, the director of training here that revamped this training, Chief James Stoom, and Captain Ray Murata. They took that lead and, and ran with it, just like President Lally said, and we acquired this ISO-1, and it wasn't easy. I pushed my members to make this happen, and we're a better fire department for it. We're safer, we're more efficient, we're more effective, and guess what? We incorporated a physical fitness challenge, the chief challenge, and uh, we're doing it every day, and we're capturing those, those numbers so that we can have those numbers in future dialogue conversations, uh, provide exercise equipment, but it doesn't go unnoticed because there's several members here right now that uh, are lean, trit, fit, and it doesn't go unnoticed, so I want to give you applause. And once again, it, it deal, this ISO is, is tremendous. You don't know what you don't know, right? So uh, we brought in uh, Christian uh, Ball from ISO. Christian, wave your hand there on the end. So Christian is a field representative for uh, ISO. And so what happened was this. A couple years ago, every year, the Metro Fire Chiefs, and those are departments bigger than 350 approximately fire departments and larger, larger than the city of Cleveland, 2,000, 3,000 members. We meet every year for our conferences. And in those conferences a couple years ago, the talk was the gold standards, one being the ISO and the other one being the international accreditation. Those two standards I was, was intrigued with 
and talked to the chiefs in regards to how do we acquire that? And one of the chiefs from Indianapolis told me, he goes, Chief, all you got to do is contact the uh, representative. There's an ISO rep here today at this conference. He'll put you in contact with your field rep in Cleveland, Ohio. Sit down with them, show them your infrastructure, show them what your fire department is made out and what you're doing, and he'll provide solutions to close those gaps to get you over the goal line. So back in 2015, like I said earlier, we were a class two. In order to get to that class one, you got to be over 90%. Christian came in with my team and the hard work and dedication, and we started compiling those points with training, physical fitness, pre-plan inspections, and now we're above that 90%. In fact, I think we're around 93.89%. So that's a huge accomplishment for this division of fire because at the end of the day, and I've said it since I, became, I came into office back in 2015, we are the best. We've been tested, we've been weighed, and we've been measured. And today I'm so thankful to say that we are class one ISO. So I wanna thank you for that. And thank you, Christian. And once again, the Clevelanders, thank you so much for issue 32. It allowed us to not only keep our staffing, but to actually add an additional 18 more members open up a new engine company because the engine companies are critical for the ISO rating. What that means is for every engine company, a mile and a half radius that we show in our 78 mile square, square footage uh, boundaries of the city of Cleveland, we start showing that information and then we, we sit down with ISO to say, okay, where do we need to be? Where, where do we need to place? And we place well. So that additional engine company and those additional staffing of 15 or 18 members made a difference. ISO is an organization that performs public protection classification grading for over 40,000 communities in the United States. The ISO PPC program evaluates communities by national recognized standards, the National Fire Protection Association and the American Waterworks Association. The three categories graded and percentages are 10% for fire dispatching, we got an excellent fire dispatch center that works 24 hours a day to provide service to the people. 10% is that 10 percent of that score is fire dispatching. 50% is fire department. 50% of that fire department score is training, staffing, station location, response times, pre-plans, fire investigation unit, and public education. 40% of that score is water supply, the water department hydrant location, pressures, testing, laptops, digital platform. That's what made the difference. ISO's grading is on a scale of one to 10. 10 being the worst and one being the best. 90% for a class one. The Cleveland Division of Fire is a 93.89. 3.89% higher than a 90% benchmark for an ISO, ISO one. <laughs> Cleveland, Ohio now is an elite group of communities in the United States to share the ISO one. The Cleveland Division of Fire is one of 412 with a class one rating and the Cleveland Division of Fire is one of three metropolitan fire departments in the state of Ohio. Columbus and Toledo being the other two. The Cleveland Division of Fire is in a prestige group of less than 1% of the fire departments in the United States to acquire an ISO-1. Once again, in 2015, our ISO-2 score was 85.98%. We are now an ISO-1 with a total credit of 93.89. That's an 8%, almost an 8% increase from 2015 and a tremendous effort of our fire department, our elected officials to make it happen and I thank you all. The Metropolitan Fire Chiefs Conference is the two gold standards. And I talked about the, uh, the ISO and um, in regards to the training I want to thank the Director of Training, Chief Thomas Schlomer, for revamping our training and the criteria to reflect the ISO. He uses the NFPA standards of training.
to accomplish. Every lieutenant on this fire department now has an Officer One training certification. That's huge. In addition to that, Chief Farmer has ramped up the company training, facility training to bring, bring companies down here at this now fire charter accredited academy so we can train our own members and then eventually branch out and bring in the suburb fire departments to go ahead and train them. So it's a win-win situation and thank you Chief Schlomer for bringing this fire director training FTA to where it needs to be. <laughs> Chief Greg Lycab, my information services unit. He drilled into turnout time and he'll get into that in a moment here. And that's per the NFPA standard for fire response and medical emergency response. Quarterly, we have a quarterly review in regards to turnout time with the assistance of quality control and performance improvement with the, uh, with the uh, support of Director Saber Pierce Scott and her team to actually identify the trends as far as response time for fire and emergency calls. Once again, we talked about earlier, the potential savings on insurance premiums for residents and commercial business owners. Contact your insurance companies once Cleveland, Ohio ISO rating of one is effective January 1st of 2022 to go ahead and, and, and look at your insurance premiums for resident and commercial properties. So now the next step, We've captured the gold standard of the ISO-1. Our next goal will be the gold standard of the, com uh, the Commission on the Fire Accreditation, the CFAI. Working with quality control improvement, performance improvement, Esri ArcGIS project manager, dialogue with President Kelly and Safety Chair Griffin and City Council members to acquire inspection reporting online, IRAL, IRAW will actually contact commercial property owners via email and phone to educate and collect annual existing fire alarm and suppression system reports. That's the next step. That's the vision indicator as far as indicators of where our gaps are in the city to provide safety to the people in fire suppression and fire alarm systems. The Deccan software that we currently use right now is a software we use to provide the future new fire station 26 that will be located on East 90th and Kidman Avenue. Deccan shows best location for engines to provide water on structure fire within that one and a half mile radius. All good stuff, 21st century technology with the support of everybody. There's no I in team. I can't do this by myself, but with a great team behind me and leading with me step by step, we can accomplish everything. So at this time right now, I'd like to introduce Battalion Chief Greg Lightcap Information Services Unit. Morning, everybody. Uh, so when Chief Cavill came into office, he uh, uh, tasked the fire department with a goal of continuous improvement. Um, continuous improvement and change isn't always popular, uh, and it's, it's painful sometimes, but the division worked together as a whole and worked very hard over the last several years to accomplish that mission, and we continue to today. Um, I'd like to get into a few of the things that we've done that did affect our, our ISO rating and helped us get to that one. Um, we started out with identifying where we're at currently, how we perform, and we wanted to be able to show where we perform and how well we perform. Uh, from there, we were able to identify areas where we can get better, where we thought we could improve, and then we uh, created plans and implemented plans to make those improvements. Uh, to do that, we used uh, new software that we adopted, and we also utilized tools and software that already were available to us through the city that we weren't leveraging. Um, those, those tools that the city already had available to us was, uh, like Chief Cavill mentioned, um, the geospatial information systems, that's ArcGIS and Esri. Uh, with those software platforms, we were able to build tools that allow us to track things like our, our equipment, equipment maintenance, uh, equipment testing. Um, we're able to do our daily checks and we check our apparatus, our, our fire trucks every morning. We're able to enter that in through ArcGIS and track it. And that provides us the benefit of when something is wrong and something is added in there where there's a problem with some equipment, uh, automatic notifications go out to make sure that equipment gets fixed 
promptly or replaced. Um, and it also gives our supervisors the ability to have eyes on uh, the entire division or their specific battalion and how they're doing that morning or that day. Um, another thing that we used Esri for was for our company pre-plans. Um, company pre-plans are when our fire companies go to a building when there's no emergency and they collect information and data about that building and they learn about it and they make plans for it. Uh, now they're able to enter these plans into Esri, uh, which is a digital GIS platform. And the benefits of that is when we're now we're responding to a building where there's an emergency, they're able to pull up that information on any digital device within seconds and they can evaluate the building. They can look at the information that they, they or another officer previously collected. And the benefit of that is we know the hazards now as we're walking into that emergency. We can better serve that building because we're fam more familiar now with the systems that are put there to assist us to deal with an emergency like uh, elevator, fire service and the elevators, uh, sprinkler systems, standpipe systems. We can more efficiently operate with those because we're reviewing it as we're rolling up to that incident, uh, which is very helpful for us. Um, uh, some other stuff that we've done, we dug, uh, starting a few years ago, we really started digging into our uh, turnout time numbers. Uh, one of the most important measures of a fire department are response times. The two measures that we look at most for improvement are call processing time and turnout time. And those are also a big part of ISO. So our call processing time is the time that our dispatchers in the in, uh, fire dispatch are first notified of an emergency. That may come from a call from a citizen, from EMS, from the county, from CPD. Um, and, but the time starts when our dispatcher receives that information. The time ends when our dispatcher notifies that fire company that they have an emergency. They give them the information and the address. Um, the turnout time side of that is when our fire company receives the information that they have an emergency to the time that they're geared up on that truck and that truck is moving. Um, so just us digging into those numbers, analyzing them, tracking them, and reporting on them has had a big effect and, and positive effects. Um, we uh, have seen constant improvement just uh, establishing those numbers and reporting on them. Um, we've created some uh, competition amongst some of our companies and amongst shifts, healthy competition. And best of all is it's increased the level of service that we're providing to the community. Um, uh, my, my goal, our goal was never uh, just to get an ISO rating of one. What was tasked to me was continuous improvement. And uh, through the hard work of the entire division, we have accomplished that. We continue to accomplish that and we'll continue to improve as the years go on. So once again, just a wonderful day. ISO, ISO one for the city of Cleveland. Uh, I'm so proud of my division, the elected officials, uh, people that live in the Cle uh, city of Cleveland play and work. Welcome to city of Cleveland, ISO one. Thank you and have a great day and be safe.